We spent today learning about quadratics. Quadratics are equations that have x squared in them, as both of these do. And we talked about what happens when you change the coefficient of x squared. And that de depends on if it's outside the parentheses or inside the parentheses, what exactly is going to be happening. So if a is outside the parentheses, like we have in this first problem here, then it's either going to be a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. If A is greater than 1, so 2, 3, 4, 5, it's a stretch. If A is 0 is less than A, which is less than 1, which simply means that A is between 0 and 1. So if A is between 0 and 1, for example, 0.5 or 0.7, if A is between 0 and 1, then it is going to be a vertical compression. So remember, vertically compressing it, just to give you a visual, um, a vertical compression is going to make the graph really wide, and a vertical stretch is going to make the graph really tall and skinny. If I have a, a value that's inside the parentheses, it's going to be the opposite of what you think it should be. So you can remember the phrase HIO, which stands for horizontal, is inside, and it's the opposite. And if A is greater than 1, so if A is 4, 5, 6, or 7, that's going to be a horizontal compression. And if 0 is between A and, or if A is between 0 and 1, it's going to be a horizontal stretch. Now the factors of what we're stretching by, it's really easy. If it's vertical, it's normal. It's a vertical stretch of A or a vertical compression of A. If it's horizontal, it's the opposite, so it's a horizontal compression of 1 over A or a horizontal stretch of 1 over A, which means we've got to flip our fractions. So if I compare both these graphs to y equals x squared, which is our parent function, remember that's y equals 1x squared. So I've got to decide if I'm vertically st or horizontally stretching or compressing. So I'm looking at my numbers. Well, my first number here is a 3, and this 3 is outside the parentheses, so I know it's going to be vertical. And if it is vertical... And 3 is bigger than 1. It's a vertical stretch of 3. That means it's by a factor of 3. And then if I look at this other one, my negative 0.7. So a couple things. First of all, let's focus on the 0.7 here. So this 0.7, that's going to be less than 1. So it's going to be a vertical compression. It's a vertical compression of 0.7. And then the other part of this that I have to worry about is this negative sign here. So what this negative does is it reflects the graph over the x-axis. So it's going to make it open down is what it's going to end up doing. So I have two more that I'm comparing to y equals x squared. So the first one I'm comparing, uh, notice both of these actually, Let's if we acknowledge this first, that the number in the a value is going to be inside the parentheses. So this is where the phrase HIO is going to come in handy for us. HIO, which stands for horizontal, is inside. It's the opposite. So 0.7 is um, less than 1, which means it's the opposite of what we think it should be. So instead of stretching, I'm sorry, instead of compressing it, this is going to be a horizontal stretch. This is a horizontal stretch of 1 over 0.7, which if you put that in the calculator, it's actually going to give you um, a decimal, or you convert it into a fraction, it's going to be 10 over 7, and that's going to be the best thing to leave it in as. And then if I have number 4, it says y equals 12x squared, and 12x is in parentheses. So my 12 here is bigger than 1, so that tells me that this is going to be a horizontal, remember it's the opposite of what we think it should be. So instead of a stretch, it's going to be a compression, because the number is getting bigger, so I'm going to be compressing the graph horizontally. And um, the, by a factor of, in this case, it's going to be of 1 over 12, because I always do the opposite of what it should be. So it was 12 over 1. I'm going to make that 1 over 12. The last part, I need to I work on identifying different pieces of the graph. So remember your vertex. We're going to start with that. Pay attention to colors. I'm going to be really intentional about my colors. My vertex is this point down here. And the vertex in this case is going to be ne positive 3, negative 4. Positive 3, negative 4. 
my axis of symmetry is the line that goes through the vertex that splits the graph in half so that the two sides are 100% identical to each other. And this line is a vertical line, so its equation, its slope is undefined. Its equation is always x equals some number. In this case, it's going to be x equals 3 because that's where it crosses the x-axis. I'm going to skip to my x and y intercepts. I'm going to do my y-intercept in blue. So here's my y-intercept of my graph. My y-intercepts, remember, are always in the form of 0 and then a number. In this case, it's 0, 5. And then I'm going to do my x-intercepts. My x-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis. I'm going to do them in yellow. And there's two of those. The first one is going to be positive 1, 0. And the second one is going to be um, positive 5 and 0. And then lastly, my domain and my range. It's important for you to remember that your domain for all of the quadratics is always all real numbers. Your domain is always all real numbers. That's always true every single time without fail. Your range is determined by your vertex. So you have to look at where your vertex is. So my vertex here is the y value is at negative 4. So I'm going to write y and negative 4, and I've got to decide, is it y? As I have two options. Option 1 is that y is greater than 4. Option 2 is that y is less than 4. And it depends on which way the graph opens. So if I draw a line here at negative 4, the bottom of my graph, my graph is completely above this point. So that makes it y is greater than, and I'm also going to put equal to, because negative 4 is actually a point on the graph. All of your ranges are going to look like this. Either y is greater than or equal to, or y is less than or equal to some number.